Follow the Dream, the story of Christopher Columbus by Peter Sis. Over 500 years ago, in the city of Genoa, Italy, a little boy was born. His name was Christopher Columbus. It was expected that Christopher would grow up to be a weaver like his father. But Christopher Columbus had his own ideas about his future. He dreamed of the faraway places and people he read about in the travels of Marco Polo. He watched the ships in the harbor of Genoa and listened to the merchants and sailors as they unloaded their cargoes of exotic goods and spices brought from the Orient, and he kept weaving dreams of adventure and discovery. As the years went by, Christopher Columbus formed a plan. He would reach the Orient by a new route. Rather than traveling east over a thousand miles of difficult terrain, he would sail west across the Atlantic Ocean. Fulfilling his dream was not easy. He had to become an expert sailor and learn how to read maps and stars for navigation. He traveled through the Mediterranean and Europe looking for a sponsor to provide him with the ships, supplies, and crews he would need for the long journey west. Everyone thought Columbus's plan was too risky, or too expensive, or just impossible. But Columbus always expected that someday he would be granted his ships. He approached the King and Queen of Spain. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella listened quietly to Christopher Columbus. Though his ideas about the world were so different than those of their advisors, they told him no. Columbus had a second audience with the king and queen, but it went no better than the first. His proposal to find a new trade route to the Orient by sailing west was rejected once more. Six years later, Columbus, Christopher Columbus was still the only one to believe that land lay to the west across the ocean and that riches would be found there. But now Queen Isabella was intrigued. She offered the king her jewels as a token of her faith in Columbus's plan. Persuaded by his wife's commission, conviction, the king decided to take a chance. He would provide Christopher Columbus with three ships and a crew of 90 men. The ships were stocked with food, water, and goods for trading. Six months later, on August 3, 1492, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Marie set sail from Palo, Spain. The three ships headed west, taking advantage of the trade winds, which Columbus hoped would carry them directly to their destination. The sea was calm, and at first it seemed the journey would be easy. But from the beginning the crew was uneasy. The endless expanse of sea with its unfamiliar birds and fish and seaweed frightened them. They wanted to turn back. Columbus was determined to keep sailing west. In his cabin on the Santa Marie, Columbus kept the record of the voyage and the ship's log. But he actually kept two logs. In one, he shortened the distances to reassure the rebellious crew. Day after day, through all kinds of weather, the three ships continued on their westward course. Then, on the 71st day, a little piece of land appeared on the horizon. Columbus assumed it was part of Japan. On October 12, 1492, just after midday, Christopher Columbus landed on a beach of white coral, claimed the land for the king and queen of Spain, knelt and gave thanks to God and expected to see the treasures of the Orient. Today, we know that what Christopher Columbus found was not a new route to the Orient, but a new continent. Columbus, however, never really knew that he had reached America. The End